Hey everybody, welcome to uh, week number four of our, what do you call it, social distancing, uh, self-quarantine time and times we're doing these uh, these videos for re-engage and thank you for being here every week and for, for those of you that are in a closed group, watch this video, make sure you're prepared to talk about it in your closed group and if you're looking to be in a closed group or getting more involved in re-engage, uh, just know that we're working on that, kind of coming with some ideas. But for now, I encourage you to watch this video. Uh, there'll be some questions attached to it, either on our YouTube page or our Facebook page. Answer those questions by yourself and then get together with your spouse and share your responses. And when they do share, try not to fight back or try not to defend yourself, but try just to listen and gain their perspective. And uh, I think that'll really go a long way. So, But no, we're trying to work on some stuff. Uh, during these videos, it's also been fun. I've had a lot of fans, and mainly that means one person asked for me to keep doing the social distancing observations. And so I have a couple this week. Uh, one of them is just so interesting as I'm out walking the dog and seeing people riding their bikes, spending time with their kids, uh, playing games, uh, walking, uh, walking the dogs. It's been really great to kind of see people having a little bit more of a family focus and a, uh, a time to just have a little more peace in their life. And I hope we can learn some things from all this. Uh, and, and one of those things might be not going to as many meetings. Maybe we can have some more Zoom meetings, which seem to be pretty effective. And, and speaking of Zoom, I have noticed this about Zoom, is that I can put in headphones and only I'm the only one in the house that can hear what you're saying if we're talking. But everyone can hear what I'm saying. And so I'm wondering if someone's going to invent something, maybe like a cone that we could put on and we could wear that our voice will be muffled so not everyone in the house hears it, but yet the person on the other end of the Zoom call might hear it. So, in fact, that may lead to, um, like in the futuristic movies, everyone's always wearing some kind of space helmet. Maybe it's going to lead to a space helmet for all of us, that the space helmet will protect us from viruses that are out there. It'll also protect us from sound being heard over. We can hear and speak and not everyone can know what's going on. So I'm looking forward to the future and all of us wearing the space helmet. Watch, it, it might happen. And as a bald man, I support any head covering that we can find for the sunlight. During this time of social distancing, I've been married, uh, celebrated my 25th wedding anniversary, been married for 25 years. Unbelievable. And so when we came into marriage, it was we were very different people. My wife came from a family where her father did most of the work around the house. And so I came from a family where my mom did most of if OK, she did all the work in our house. And so when we came into marriage, we kind of expected each other to do a lot of those things. And so where we kind of landed is me as a very selfish person. We kind of landed at the beginning where my wife, Alicia, would cook and clean. And it was my job to complain if she didn't do it right. So it was a good situation that she just absolutely loved. It was fantastic. So that didn't last very long because, of course, that wouldn't last very long. And so she had a conversation with me. And so reluctantly, I started doing some dishes. And now I feel like I am a master of the dishwasher and probably a little too weird about the dishwasher. The plates have to go a certain way. And so when we had this conversation, I would do things and I would do things reluctantly. I would make sure she was aware. I would try to say, hey, look, you owe me for doing this. Like it, like somehow it was a, a, a privilege for me to do any work. And there was one of those gut punch statement days when my wife said to me, you know, I wish you'd do things for me. Not because you wanted to get something or wanted to prove something or wanted to receive any recognition. I wish you would do things like that. For me, just because you love me and you care about me. And that was tough. And so it led me down this path of trying to figure out a better way of doing marriage because I realized I wasn't doing right. And so I realized along the way that one of the best qualities that we can have in marriage is humility. And at the time, I didn't have much of it. I preached about it, but I didn't have much of it. I wanted recognition of others. I wanted people to think well of me because of the things I did as I spoke, as I did whatever. And I realized humility wasn't much a part of my life. Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 through 11 is one of my favorite passages, not because I've mastered this by any stretch of the imagination, but because I want to get closer to this ideal because I believe this is the way that Christ wants us to live. So Paul wrote this letter about Jesus and he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of of others. And here's the kicker. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to hang on to, something to grasp. But he made himself nothing, uh, taking the very nature of a servant, ugh, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient 
to death, even death on a cross, a humiliating death. He was the the king, the Lord, the, the one that created all things, and yet he had to become obedient and, he, and humble himself in the most base way, even death on a cross. Therefore God then exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so from this passage, there's a couple things where the attitude of Jesus is something that we're called to emulate, especially as uh, married people. Uh, we're called to treat our husbands and our wives in a way that honors Christ and, and take on his attitude toward that. And it also says one of those things that we can do is to consider the needs of someone else above our own and not just do something because of selfishness all the time where I was living. And so, again, I was living the opposite of all that kind of stuff. And so I looked up what does humility mean? If this is the quality where that really is a pillar of our marriages, what does that mean? It simply means to be humble. Okay. Well, what does humble mean? And if you're going to look at the Bible and kind of understand, it really just means, am I thinking about other people's needs? And kind of put those needs above mine. So I'm not always looking just for my own interest, but I'm humbly coming before them and saying, I care about you and I love you just because of who you are, not because of what I can get from you, like my wife said to me those years ago. And so the essence, the essence of humility is thinking about your spouse's needs above your own. And I really do believe it doesn't really work unless we get to that spot, unless we get to the spot where we think, okay, I need to think of their interests and not always mine. It's almost like this idea in marriage that we choose to make our spouse the most important person in the room all the time. When we're together, they're the most important person in the room. We think about their needs above our own. We choose to put our spouse in a place of honor. And I really believe this is God's way. That God says, those that are around you, you trust me. You make them the most important person in the room, and I'm going to take care of you. And it's amazing how we do that. Whenever we're around people that kind of make us the most important in the room, we just, important, most important person in the room, we honestly feel like, wow, what a great person, how great they are. When someone asks us a bunch of questions and asks us about ourselves, we're like, man, what a great person, but we didn't really do anything. And that's kind of the path of marriage, that if we can't get to that spot, we're always just thinking, what do I need? What do I want? How can I get the things that I desire in this life? Then we're not really walking in humility and the thing seems to be a little tough. But humility is tough because uh, we all have a lot of t a pride and selfishness inside of us. It's just who we are. We truly do, if we're going to push, come to shove, see our needs as massively important. What I need is really, really important. We're afraid that we're going to be taken advantage of. I used to say all the time that one of the things about ministries, it feels like at times I'm a doormat for Jesus. People just walk all over you. And sometimes you don't want to do that in marriage. It doesn't seem fair. What a when do I get what I want? And we also kind of need recognition of saying how great you are. But Jesus is saying, hey, you just do these things. This is the way it works. You trust me, you do these things, and I'm going to take care of you. So if there's ever a time for us to draw a circle around ourselves and make sure that we're healthy and whole in a right spot, this would be it, because this is asking a lot from us. And when we're humble, it oftentimes goes unnoticed by others. We're not getting that praise that we'd like. There might be times that our spouse has no idea that we've done something for them. They might not even see it or understand it or just take it for granted. And sometimes we go unappreciated. They may never say thank you for that. But it's interesting, this idea of humility that says that's okay. We keep serving. We keep trusting that we know that God's going to take care of us. And if we're loving someone else that way, that love is going to be poured back to us in ways that we can't even understand. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But that love is coming back to us. In Matthew 10, 39, I've never understood this passage, but it's making more and more sense. It says, if you cling to your life and your own desires, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. And so God is saying your way where you take, take, take and put yourself above every other, make yourself the most important person in the room, it's going to end up losing your life. But if you go the way of God and then you kind of embrace humility then you're actually going to find it. And I've discovered that to be true as I've matured in marriage. God's way actually leads to us experiencing love, kindness, forgiveness, grace, compassion, respect. And I really do believe that embracing humility and thinking about your spouse as the most important person in the room all the time, that's one of the keys to having a great marriage. Without it, I think we're in a little bit of trouble. 
So a few signs maybe that humility is coming out more in your life, a few things to do. Um, we, like my wife said, we serve because we love, uh, not to get anything back. So keep that in mind. We're not expecting anything for them to serve us back. We just love. Uh, one of the things that I really think is great is that um, Dr. John Gottman, who I talk about all the time and you guys make fun of me for it, is a researcher and his secular research shows that spouses that put the needs of their their spouse above their own tend to have the most successful marriages. And so one of the ways he says that we can do that better is to ask questions because we're getting to know what's going on inside the world of that other human being. And if we're just making statements, it's about us, but if we're asking questions, it's about them. So a good thing to do would look, would look at your life and evaluate, am I asking a lot of questions or making a lot of statements? And how can I ask more questions to know what's going on inside of their world? It's weird at first. It takes a little time, but start asking questions about them. Another thing to do, and in those questions, is one of the best things that my wife and I did, and it's actually one of the questions uh, that we'll give you tonight, is I asked her, what are three things I can do to make you really feel special and loved? And it really gave me a target of what to do. And so now my goal is to try to do one of those things pretty consistently. So ask your spouse, what are three things uh, that you can do to make them feel special and loved? Because again, they're the most important person in the room. Their needs are the ones we think about. And as we do that, God's going to take care of us. So try to do one of those things every day. But embrace humility. We need to pray and ask God for this. But I really do believe it is the way. It is the path. It's the quickest way to bring a change to our marriage when we are um, thinking about other people more than ourselves. And this bleeds over into work, this bleeds over into life, to parenting, and it makes such a huge difference. So as we as we conclude, um, this is a tough thing to ask. It's a tough thing to ask of myself, of all of us. Let me say a quick prayer for us. God, we come before you and ask for help. May our attitude be the same as that of Christ Jesus, and we're going to need you, Holy Spirit of God, to work in our hearts. And Lord, somehow, some way, we can remember the phrase that our spouse needs to be the most important person in the room we can ask them questions. We could serve them. We could love them. We could do things for them. And we know, God, as we do that, that's going to lead to some, some good things in marriage. That's going to lead to a beautiful way of following you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Stay six feet apart, except for your spouse. Uh, don't stay six feet away from them. Uh, push in, get close, uh, and serve them. And I'll see you guys next week. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.